Okay, folks, welcome to our technical analysis of Microsoft stock, ticker symbol MSFT. It's a little company you might have heard of. And what we're going to talk about tonight are Microsoft earnings and the reaction by the market to those earnings and why it's down in the after hours session. And then we're going to take a, a look at the triple Q names. The triple Qs are the Invesco NASDAQ 100 ETF, ticker symbol QQQ. Microsoft is the larger component of the Triple Qs and probably next to the Spiders, easily one of the most popular ETFs traded. We'll take a look at the relative performance of Microsoft to the Triple Qs. And then we're going to do a little bit of a deep dive and some technical analysis on Microsoft and why, despite the fact that we had earnings that beat expectations, why I am bearish technically on Microsoft and have been for quite a while now. So let's get to it. All right, so off of Market Watch, Microsoft earnings easily top expectations, but forecast for Xbox's debut quarter ding stocks. All right, the, the overall quarter was pretty good. Their cloud business, very strong. Earnings per share, $1.82 per share, up from $1.38 per share a year ago. Huge, huge EPS growth. Revenue grew more than $4 billion year over year for the same quarter last year. And they blew away analyst est estimates for EPS and for sales. So a great quarter. Now where the stock has found some weakness is with its forecast for next quarter when it will be launching the new Xbox console. Microsoft guided revenue of 39 spot 5 billion to 40 spot 4 billion in the quarter. Amazing growth still. And it beat relative to the 2019 holiday period. But expectations for next quarter came in lower than the average estimate of 40 spot 5 billion. So it's a juggernaut, a major league juggernaut, no doubt about it. But technically, this is a wounded stock, and I believe that there is a lot of risk associated with Microsoft stock in the intermediate and short terms. Their cloud business unit beat on revenues with 31% year-over-year growth in that business unit. That's amazing. When you think about the size of Microsoft, it's just incredible. So net-net, despite the forward-looking guidance being poor with regard to the Xbox, overall, the business as a whole is quite sound at current and on a forward-looking basis. So fundamentally, there's really no reason to go hammering these shares down with reckless abandon unless, of course, the technicals have gotten way too ahead of themselves and we're going to go to that in a moment. We're going to take a look at the charts that have me very concerned about Microsoft on a technical basis. I certainly couldn't make the argument on a fundamental basis, not giving their known report of earnings for this quarter and their forecast for next quarter. Now, taking a look at Microsoft on a price to earnings ratio basis, the shares are measurably lower than their historical highs, but they're certainly nowhere near their historical lows. So let's just say that they're the upper band of the mid-range in terms of P.E. ratio. So it's not really a concern to me, the P.E. ratio. What's more of a concern for me with regard to Microsoft and its valuation is when you take a look at price to sales. Here is where Microsoft has, has just simply skyrocketed in terms of the willingness of investors. Now, when you compare the price of sales relative to a near peer competitor in cloud, let's say Google, Alphabet, you can see that price of sales by far exceeds Alphabet's. And for that matter, if you really wanted to get crazy here, uh, price of sales is greater than Tesla. This is a concern. Now, segueing over and into the charts, Let's begin with a look at the triple Qs on a quarterly time frame. And you may be saying, why are you using the quarterly time frame? I'll get to it in a moment. But take note of where RSI is on a quarterly time frame for the triple Qs. Now, the triple Qs are important because Microsoft is the largest component of the triple Qs. And the Qs have an RSI rating of 81 spot 26 on a quarterly time frame. So fairly overbought, especially for an ETF. Now, when you bring up a chart of Microsoft, the RSI on Microsoft is at 92 spot 51. 
Think about it. 81 on the QQQs, 92 and a half on Microsoft on a quarterly time frame. We have never, ever in the history of Microsoft been. Now, the last time we were anywhere near this type of an overbought level was back here in October of 1999. And for those of you who were not trading at that point in time, the markets were as irrational then as they are today. And it was only a few months later, March of 2000, where things got real, real, real fast. So this is the chart that I'm looking at when I talk about my concerns on a technical basis. Now, you may be saying, you know, Bob, you're picking on the stock. It's a, it's a true winner. I have Xbox. I love it. Why do you hate it so much? Because it gets better. Go, let's go to a yearly chart. RSI on a yearly time frame is at 93 spot 55. Folks, this is a bubble. Just as back in October of 1999, Microsoft was in a bubble. History is in the process of repeating itself. It may not happen tomorrow. It may not happen next week. It may not happen next month. But this is going to get resolved. And as I always like to say, it's not going to end well. So be forewarned. This is a problem. Now let's drill down. How do we close out the day? It's not looking great for Microsoft short term. And I'll throw up some lines here to illustrate what I mean. You can see that we're putting in lower highs on the RSI. Not only that, we have broken down to lower lows. We closed out the day today below 50 on RSI. What's more concerning to me than RSI are the stochastics. Lower highs and now trading down below the 50 mark. And as I always like to teach members that when you have stokes trading down below the 50 mark and declining Rallies tend to fade, folks. It happens all the time. Now, you may be taking a look at the chart and say, you know, Bob, you're ruling out the fact that we bounced off of support. We're holding here, dude. You're wrong. We're consolidating. Maybe I am, but I doubt it. I think they held the shares in check today, waiting for the news, and they are now selling that news. We closed at 213 spot 25. Let's check in and see where we're trading at current as I close out this commentary. 209 spot four. So not a horrible after hour session, but it was enough, folks, for me to open up a short position just prior to me beginning this recording to put a hedge on my long trades going short the triple Qs. And if the market weakens up tomorrow, we'll be looking to lean more into the short side, as I believe that Microsoft is going to continue to remain weak in the very short term at a bare minimum. So my closing statement here with regard to Microsoft's short term and longer term is that with no stimulus deal on the table at current, there is a warning flag on the track, folks. Be very, very careful. Now, if you'd like to see how I use RSI to trade the markets, make sure you watch this video that should be appearing in front of you right now. And if you'd like to see last night's analysis of Twilio and its performance after earnings, make sure you watch that analysis that should be appearing right in front of you. And everyone have a great night. Be well.